a wonderful national anthem was just played. As you can see, the Delval Aggies, as well as the Widener Pride, really getting pumped up for this game. And who can blame them, Nick? This is a championship game. This is going to be huge. Arguably uh, the most anticipated game of the year. We were thinking about this game since October. Definitely, definitely been anticipating this for quite a while now. Yeah, that's right, Nick. Uh, a lot of Division Three football analysts have marked this game. A lot of the college football analysts have marked this game as the game to be watched. Both teams have waited for this moment for a long time. As Nick, can you feel the intensity right now? I, I, it's making me shiver. <laughs> nothing. There's nothing like battling two other sets of commentators to do it, but I'm ready. And it seems uh, uh, Delval is getting the ball first. Yes, that's right. Widener will be on the kick. The kick returners for Del Val, Armani Fuller, Williams, as well as Tyler Fink. It was an onside kick to begin the game. A wonderful attempt, but I believe the Aggies will recover that. A bold, bold statement from Widener to start this game off, Nick. Absolutely. An attempt, at, uh, a bit of confusion, but it seems that uh, Del Val got the best of him. Yeah, I, I'm shocked as Del Val's offense is headed out. Aaron Wilmer, the big story, he's the quarterback for this team. Expect some big stuff from both quarterbacks. The ball on the 47 yard line. As Wilmer will drop back, he finds his man for a few yards as Bobby Martorella. Martorella puts up an average of 33 yards a game and he seems to be getting an early start here. Yeah, that's right. It is second and one. That was a nine yard catch from Martorella. Delval, Delval takes up a lot of yards. So Widener's defense has to be superior today as Rashid Bailey, I believe, makes the catch. That is for the first down. Beautiful play by Rashid Bailey. He had to drop down to the ground and he made the huge catch for Delval. And from the get-go, we have Aaron Wilmer picking apart Widener's secondary. And As the ball now on the 31 yard line, first and 10. That ball's going to Smallwood. Smallwood, at least a first down. He's going to go down to the 10. Smallwood is still going. It's still going. Oh my lord. Chris Smallwood just showed Widener why he is the top running back in this conference. Oh my god. Absolutely unbelievable. Chris Smallwood made it down to the three yard line, a 27 yard gain for Mr. Smallwood, as it is first and goal for Delval. Expect another run. Oh my God, Chris Smallwood, what a play. As Smallwood Ooh. will then get hit. Brandon I believe Harper. Brandon Harper was on that. Yes, that was, Brandon, that was Brandon Harper with a big tackle for another loss. Big, big play there. It is uh, seven yards to go now for Delval. That was a four yard loss on the play. And that was Harper's 10th uh, tackle for a loss this season. That's right, Nick. Brandon Harper, he is the key to this defense. He played amazing against Wilkes, and now he is playing amazing against the top running back in this conference and Chris Smallwood. If there's a rivalry to look for today, it's Smallwood versus Harper. Yeah, that's right. As A timeout is called on the field. We have 12.53 remaining here in this first quarter. It is second and goal on Widener six. We saw we saw Delval's offense at their finest. Absolutely. Wilmer threw a couple plays and then 
I can't get over the run from Chris Smallwood. That was absolutely ridiculous. He's, he's defining what truly means to be a power back. Yes, that's right. Chris Smallwood looking like Marshawn Lynch out there. Or Just incredible strength. Of course, they both share the same dreadlocks as well. That was <laughs> or if you want if you want a little earlier comparison, Mike Allstott of the Tampa Bay Buccaneers a, few, uh, a decade ago. Yes, that's right, Nick. Great comparison there. Widener's fans on their feet, looking for a big stop here on second and goal. Wilmer will take it himself and will just go to the outside. Widener's defense, great job there. He, they didn't even make a tackle on him. They just forced him to run out of bounds. I, no gain on that play, so does third and goal. These fans are looking for a gigantic play here. You got to imagine that uh, Widener will be hawking, uh, using a quarterback spy for uh, their linebackers, making sure that Wilmer doesn't rush the ball. Yes, that's right, Nick. Uh, plenty of options. They can give it to Smallwood for the run. Uh, watch out for the tight end, number 41, Max Stella, as well. He may get an opportunity here from Wilmer. Wilmer's going to drop back. There's the throw, and, and there's the touchdown for Delval. Nice and easy, it's Bobby Martarella again. His second reception of the drive, this time for the touchdown. It is six nothing DelVal with the uh, field goal unit coming out. The secondary is getting confused out there. And you gotta, it's gotta imagine it's gonna be tough covering all these uh, weapons. A nice and easy kick there for the DelVal kicker. Mm -hmm. uh, I believe that is... We are trying to find a name Brandon, on him. Brandon Snyder. Yeah, Brandon Snyder there on the kick. Also, Amir Sorrell came dangerously close to blocking that extra point. Yes, that's right. Uh, we, we really uh, know that Widener can defend kicks, whether it be punts or... Uh, Field goal attempts, we saw right. that last uh, last game versus Wilkes. We saw Alex Stewart block a few punts. We saw Amir Sorrell get on top of those as DelVal's kicking unit will be coming out onto the field. Some kick returners for Widener that you can anticipate. Uh, of course, Anthony Davis with uh, seven returns and 170 yards. Robert gets back there as well as well as the uh, senior Nicholas White. So we will see which player will receive this one. Twelve twenty-one here remaining in the first quarter. Delval already up seven nothing. Tyler or Aaron Wilmer, shall I say, putting on a clinic as the ball will Ooh. be received at Widener's 30 for maybe one or two yards. Uh, Hayden Warren with a, a big uh, shoulder to the Delaware Valley kick uh, kicking team. Absolute power tight end. If that's if that's another big thing for uh, Klein to use to his advantage is uh, arson uh, is armory of tight ends. He's got yes. a lot to choose from. That's right, Hayden Warren did make a good play there as Klein will drop back. Long throw, looking for Davis. Oh! Davis fell down after, uh, after Del Val's cornerback fell. I think Davis was looking for a pass interference there, unfortunately, for Widener. That did not happen. As a good play there from Seth Klein, almost a first down. As I, that was about nine yards, so I believe it is third and one.
It's all right. Some technical difficulties going on. Second and six after some technical difficulties were solved. I believe Tarrant Morrison was hit for only a few yards. Delval's defense really, really pumped up some hard hits on Tarrant Morrison there. Yeah, that's our second big pileup of the game coming uh, first coming from Smallwood on uh, Del Delavar's ensuing or initial offensive drive. Yes, Morrison only got a yard on that. It is third and five as Klein will drop back. Throws. I believe that was caught and no, it was not. Wow. Shocking play there as no, I thought it was a catch. I, was, I thought it was as well. Unfortunately, uh, the ref signals that it hit the ground, so we will see the punting unit now for the Widener Pride, and that is Rashid Bailey back there to receive for Del Val. Within the 20 yard line, that's going 15. That will bounce to the 15 yard line, so good job by the Widener uh, special teams unit as here comes that potent Delval offense once again. It's uh, it'd be smart for Widener if they kept them within these 20 yards, obviously, but it's, it's pivotal to keep them there at this point because we want to for force another uh, fourth and out. Yes, that's right. Brandon Harper's really going to have to keep an eye on Smallwood. We saw a great defensive play from him last drive, but Smallwood got a huge play uh, last drive, so that is pivotal for Delval. Widener cannot let that happen. Wilmer will drop back. Long throw for Bailey, and a pass interference call on number 32 for Widener, Drew Jemison. I believe that will be pass interference. He was all over Bailey. This ruckus crowd, huge uproar on that call from the referee. The ball will move up to the 30 yard line because of that call. Widener's got to watch these big plays because Delval is clearly explosive in them as Smallwood will get it. So, oh, wow, what a move by Smallwood. And he is going to get pushed out at the 45 yard line here. 16 yards for uh, Chris Smallwood as. What a move, Nick. <laughs> He's an explosive player. He throws uh, he throws some quick cuts and the Widener secondary is seemingly tackling like the 2012 Eagles. That's right, I'm pretty sure I saw those cuts from LaShawn McCoy. What a play from Chris Smallwood. He's that good. He is so scary for this Widener defense. Wilmer will drop back. Deep throw looking for Bailey, that's over his head. So we will go to second and 10. Thankfully. Nick, what's going to be the key for uh, Widener's defense today since we've already seen some big plays from Del Val? Widener really needs to up the pressure on the defensive line. If they can push past the O-line and get to Wilmer and Smallwood in the backfield, then they present a real danger for Del Val. Yeah, that's right, Nick. As Wilmer looking at the sideline now, debating on what he should do. Still doesn't have a huge clue there. 
He will give it to Smallwood, and Smallwood will get hit. I believe he picked up a couple, however. Only a few yards there for Chris, so Widener really watching him on that play. Great job by their defense, as it is third and eight for the Delvell Aggies. This is exactly what Widener needs to turn the tide and swing it back and the momentum back in their direction with a third down stop. Yes, that's right. A lot of key players. Watch Bobby Martorella, Dan Lopez, Rashid Bailey, because I think Wilmer's going to go to the air. Wilmer will drop back the throw, and that is incomplete. That is an incomplete pass, and we're going to fourth down, and I believe they're not even going to try for it. When comparing uh, statistics, uh, Delvell had, a, I believe, a, an above 60% uh, third down conversion. So that's an impressive stop by Widener. Yeah, it was a lucky play there for Widener. Uh, Wilmer's pass just went a little far to the uh, sideline. Mike Jensen, the wide receiver, intended wide receiver, was unable to get that one as Snyder will punt this away for Delvell. A low Bob punt and touched. That was down. Around the, the five, five. nine yard oh, line. Nine yard line. My apologies there. As I believe Jordan Livingston might have down to that one for Delvell. As here comes Seth Klein and the Widener offense. Uh, he's got the weight of Widener on his shoulders, and everybody's hoping he pulls through it. Gotta imagine they start off strong here with either a midfield pass or a draw. Klein will hand this. Oh! A huge hit there. Ugly hit. Kuve Lafayette received that huge hit. Uh, it is second and five now for Widener. As Cuve Lef Lafayette uh, picking up a few yards on that one, we are. They get a first down. Oh, wow, a first down on that one. Yeah, yeah. We thought he was. Uh, just a little bit shy, but first down, luckily, for the Widener Pride. Oh, the ref's missing it, it seems. As Klein awaiting for the snap, he will drop back, airs it out, long throw, looking for Davis. Davis got pulled down. And he down. throws a flag. Brian Carter uh, took him down on that play, so I believe that is a pass interference call. Is we're going to get the call. Widener will go to their own 35 on that play. Both teams looking for long, deep, uh, explosive throws to their uh, key receivers, mm -hmm. Bailey and Davis for Widener. Now, over the course of the season, Widener has not been known to uh, receive a lot of penalties, but they're known to draw them. So expect that to be a very big part of this game. That's right, Nick. As it's first and 10, Klein will drop back. He will find his man, Blaine Price, as a late flag was thrown here. We'll see what the uh, issue was on that one. I believe it is on the Aggies. Ooh, good wow, call. Face mask call now on the Aggies. These calls are beginning to kill uh, Del Val as Widener keeps moving up, not because of uh, plays, but rather penalties. Be prepared to see a sea of yellow flags flying out there because uh, we're going to get a heated matchup today. This is a first and 10 on the 42 of Delval now. Klein will drop back. Klein looking for Anthony Davis. Oh, Davis will just miss that one. That's a gigantic 
gigantic matchup for Widener and Delval today. Uh, Anthony Davis versus Brian Carter. We've been seeing them battle back and forth. Also, uh, Davis was expecting a pass interference call there, but of course did not get it. Yeah, I feel like Widener's already gotten two big calls, as well as that uh, first down from Lafayette, so we'll see. Oh, as Lafayette will get hit hard. By Danny Wynn. By Danny Wynn, the uh, key defensive player for DelVal, as it is now third down. Third down and six on DelVal's own 37 here for the Widener Pride. Klein will drop back, looking for his target. Oh, and that was nearly intercepted as the ball gets deflected to the sideline. Brian Carter on that play again. I believe uh, Klein was initially looking for Anthony Davis, of course, but then settled for, I believe, Ragona. However, Brian Carter broke that play up. Expect a high punt here as they're going to try to put it within the five yard line. There is the punt. <laughs> oh, that ends up hitting off of a Drew number Jemison. 32. Drew Jemison. Drew Jemison, who's had his name all over this game as well. As we really have n not seen something like that in uh, football before. So, unfortunately for Widener, it did hit one of their own players. So it'll be placed at about the 12 yard line. Yep. <laughs> 12, we are on DelVal's 12 yard line here as Wilmer will hand it off to Bing for only a few yards. Tyler Bing was set in motion and they did give him the ball. They were not using him as a decoy. Yep. As Bing will pick up two yards, second and eight for the Aggies on their own 14. At this point in the game, Nick, 634 left in the first quarter. I don't think Wider knows what to do. They really have not been held scoreless this it's, long. It's been uh, a tough first quarter for them uh, as they're hoping the, deep, the offense slows down at some point. A handoff to Chris Smallwood and Widener stuffs him on that play. They're starting to uh, really know Mr. Smallwood's ways heading into DelVal's third drive. As I don't believe that was for any gain. As nope. it is, in fact, there was a loss of a yard as it's third and nine here. DelVal on their own 13. I, I got to believe uh, when going back to the Wilkes game, Seth Klein going back to offense has to really look out for as many receivers as he can and not just focus on the likes of Anthony Davis. Although pivotal, he needs to contact everybody on the field. Very good point, Nick, as Wilmer will drop back. He will air this out to Martorella, who just missed that ball. He got a hand on it, but could not haul it in. As we are going to fourth and nine now, DelVal will uh, be set to punt on their own 13, so uh, Mr. Snyder, their punter, will be all the way back in their own end zone. Yeah. So expect the pressure from a very talented special teams unit of Widener. As there was the punt to Anthony Davis, who will make the fair catch call. Oh, and a flag. Come and a flag. I believe there might have been a late shove after the play. By number 23, uh, Rashawn Sorrell. Rashawn Sorrell may be guilty for that one. Both teams, Nick, would you say they have to keep their heads in this? They cannot. If Widener fails to keep a cool head, then we have a, a very tough game ahead of us. 
Um, essentially, I think that'd be the main point for both of these teams. They need to maintain solidarity and keep them keep themselves in line. Yes, Nick, that's right. You know, uh, they got to keep the emotions in check because these penalties can cost teams, as we saw uh, earlier with all the penalties for DelVal last drive. We saw how far Widener got off the field. As it is first and 10 on their own 32, they could have been starting around midfield, but after that penalty, they are back to their 32 yard line with 528 here in the first quarter. He will hand this ball off. Tempers flaring about as whistles three go to. Yards. That's right, Nick, about three yards. So it'll be second and seven, I believe. You gotta imagine Widener's gonna favor the shotgun as they try to spread out the offense. Yes, that's right as the throw to Anthony Davis was incomplete. Seth Klein has not looked like Seth Klein today, which could be a big issue for the Widener Pride. You gotta imagine he's a little shaken at the moment, uh, trying to tough through a very tough defensive and offensive opponent. But if there's one man that'll rein it in, it'll be Seth Klein. That's right, Chris Wicks will be in the backfield now for Widener with Seth Klein as Klein looking. He's scrambling now. Klein's gonna have to run it. And a, he dove. I don't think he quite got it. He might have because of positioning from the ref. But, but, Another 15-yard penalty. This is a losing 30 yards from the initial uh, spot yeah, of the that's punt. that's a shame because Seth Klein did, in fact, get that first down. However, because of that chop block call, they will be back 15 yards as it is a third and a lot. Third and 22, I believe. They are on their own 20 now. You got, you got to imagine that this is the, probably Widener's roughest first quarter of this season. as Klein will drop back. Oh, got out of a tackle, Klein scrambling. Oh. Klein making a big run. He's, he fumbled the ball. Delval says they got it. The ref's calling him down. Klein saying he was down and possibly got a first down. Wow, first down for Widener. It was a big run by Seth Klein. Wow, what a run by Seth Klein. 21 yards for Seth Klein on that play. As now they, the refs are changing their call. It is now fourth and one. Boy, tough break for Widener there, Nick. Got to imagine the cold air is making the uh, eyes of the refs all dry. So they need to wake up out there. As there's a punt, it was almost blocked. As the ball will go out of bounds at the 31, that was Robert Cleveland, a sophomore who almost got his hands on that one. Boy, Widener is very close to uh, giving up a huge play right there. Definitely showing how vulnerable they can be on both sides of the ball this first quarter, but I believe they'll bounce back. Yes, that's right, Nick. Uh, a side note, Taryn Morrison, a little shaken up on the sideline. That's why we've been seeing uh, Cuvée Lafayette as well as Christopher Wicks. So we will check back up on how he's doing in a little bit, but there is 346 remaining here in the first quarter as Wilmer will drop back. Oh, and it's intercepted. It's intercepted. <laughs> it's intercepted. Widener fans going crazy. I believe that was Jamal Goodman, I think. As I believe Stacy Sonnerville got that interception. I could be wrong. Wow. That was that was insane. That was I think that'll get the team going. That'll it's it excited Huge me. Momentum boost there for Widener. Aaron Wilmer. 
absolutely great read by Somerville. Somerville, excuse me. Yeah, Stacy, he's he's known to uh, get a few interceptions as he got one right there. Great job by him as Klein will go into the play action. He will find Davis. Ooh, as Davis showing off his strength there. He's getting a few uh, yards after the play. And it seems we got Widener pumped up now. That's right, huge play. Widener fans are going. They're pumped, I'm pumped, Nick's pumped. This is just a... Uh, a ball of emotion. That's right, Nick. I'm trapped inside a glass case of emotion. First and 10 here on their 15. Terran oh. Morrison is back, and he will make it, I believe, just a yard shy of the first down. Another another big play by Widener. Make that three yards shy as it's second and three to go. Second and three. As Robert Getz comes out and uh, I believe um, Hayden Warren comes in. That's right as Klein. Klein will give it to Morrison. He will get in for the touchdown. Tarrant Morrison will score for Widener to make this a seven to six game. Tarrant Morrison got a big hole on his left side. He made it through. Great job by Tarrant Morrison. Smart play calling in um, Mr. Hayden Warren on the block on the left side. A big boy making a huge play for this Widener offense. Yeah, that's right, Nick. You noted about their tight ends. They can do a lot. Catches, blocking. Hayden Warren showed that off right there as the extra point is good. Wow. What an interesting minute and a half, I'd say, for uh, Widener fans. An absolute turn of events on the pick by Sunnerville and uh, the big play by Morrison. Expect the unexpected from this game, folks, as, uh, as this cold November weather is going to heat up. That's right, Nick. We are uh, very fortunate to be in the uh, announcer's booth today. Thanks, instead Tim. Instead of being in that uh, frigid temperatures outside. Even though we're getting it a little bit, you got to thank uh, good old Tim Skopansky for hooking us up, putting us in the press box. Yes, that is right, Nick, as we see some smoke uh, blow by from the cannons that were just fired off, thanks to the uh, wonderful ROTC program here at Widener University. Great, as, great bunch of kids. That's right, as Widener's kicking unit is out. As there is the kick, oh, and it's fumbles. fumbled. It's fumbled. Oh, man. He's still going to get a few yards there, but that was... Tyler Bing. That was Tyler Bing who fumbled that one. Trying to pull a Deshaun, a Deshaun Jackson on us. That's right, Nick. Delvell is very lucky that they did not uh, turn that ball over. As another penalty on the Widener Pride on, on that previous play. Offsides, but it's going to be a re kick. So. Got to imagine uh, Mike Kelly, the coach of uh, Widener, is going to have a stern talking to with the, with the team in the halftime. In the, uh, yes, in the break that's in the action. right, Nick. Uh, just stupid penalties Widener's taking today. And they're truly killing themselves in this championship game because of these uh, unfortunate penalties. But you got to believe one, one talking to from the coach will definitely help cool the nerves at some point. Maybe even uh, expect a timeout if the penalties continue. Yes, that's right. As a big kick there from Widener, as it is Bing who will actually catch this one this time. He's got a big hole as an initial hit there from Widener. 
That was number 46, Kyle Twitty, who got a hand on him. Good play by Widener's special teams there as we are headed to a first and 10, Aggies ball on the 37. Uh, we're seeing some more Upper Moreland people in the stand, so another shout out to the Upper Woo. Moreland High School as that's what caught my attention. <laughs> Oh, and it's a big run from Smallwood. Smallwood will make it to the 45-yard line of Widener as uh, one of the refs took a stumble on that play. As Chris Smallwood easily just makes a big gain there. And it's another first and 10 for the Aggies. Uh, ball on Widener's 45. We'll be saying this all game. You got to watch out for Smallwood. Uh, and uh, also watch for DelVal throwing in more tight ends to continue the run as much yes, as they can. That's right. As Wilmer, big throw looking for Martorella. Mm, not Martorella. I believe that was Mike Jensen. That is incomplete as it is second and 10. Widener's been doing exactly what I thought they would do from the start is that's man cover their top receivers and uh, keep players over the middle inspecting or expecting a pass. That's right, as it is second and 10 with just under two minutes to go here in the first quarter. Widener has to watch out for Smallwood. He can just turn any play into a big one rather like don't really pay attention to Wilmer but rather Smallwood but it's Wilmer who's dropping back and he's scrambling oh big big hit. tackle by Amir Sorrell and a flag a possible hold maybe Sorrell with a giant hit Seeing a holding. Stacy Sunnerville very popular. It's going against Del Val. Call as a uh, penalty on Del Val. As that was a holding call on the tight end, Max Stella, as Del Val will now face a second and Mm. Just kidding, I believe that will be <laughs> a third down. I think they're redoing second down. Oh, wow, well, look at that. They are redoing it. As interesting play there. The second and 20 as the throw to Fairley was deflected. That was Brandon Harper. Brandon Harper with another big play for the pride. Like I said, Harper keeping an eye out for those over the middle passes as Widener seems to be covering their men extremely well. Third and 20 for DelVal. Ball on their. Uh, on their own 45 now. They have to keep an eye on Rashid Bailey here. As explosive as Chris Smallwood is, I don't think he'll be getting the ball in this uh, circumstance. Unless they throw a draw or a screen, you gotta watch out for him. That's right. Wilmer will drop back, long throw. That's Jensen. But just, it's seemingly Jensen just short. Jensen might have gotten there. A yard short as it is fourth and one. Coverage fourth dropped. And, fourth and short here. Coverage dropped last play. Uh, an awful mistake by Widener as they can seemingly capitalize if they stop Delaware Valley here. That's right, fourth and one, ball on Widener's 36. Uh, speaking of six, watch out for Chris Smallwood on this play. <laughs> Smallwood might. Oh, they're gonna throw a pass. Wilmer will drop back, looks for Jensen, incomplete and there's a flag. Oh, dear. 
That was a late flag. A late flag. Widener fans are going berserk. A hold on Widener. And in this seemingly sunny yet cold day, we have a rain of booze coming from the audience. That's right. Uh, you can guarantee those boos are not coming from the uh, Delaware Valley faithful. Nope. As, oh boy. Another tough break for Widener. That's right. You can see the Delaware uh, fans have really packed this stadium today as it's first and 10. Ball on Widener's 27. Wilmer will give it to Smallwood who gets met right in the middle. By uh, Frank Wendling. As the time will wind down here in the first quarter, looks like that could be the final play here in the first. A very, a very mixed emotion type of uh, quarter as we're wrapping it up at a 7 7 tie. Oh boy, it's been a roller coaster of emotions this first quarter, hasn't it, Nick? Oh man, I can, I can already feel something. I can't tell you what, I can't describe it, but it's something. And that is halftime, no, or first quarter. not even halftime. My, my apologies, I don't know where my head was at on that one. But it is seven to seven here. Nick, uh, we've seen the, the big matchup of the day, uh, Widener's defense versus Delval's offense. Right. What do you think Widener's defense can do to possibly uh, get some uh, three and outs? You really gotta focus more on what's going on in the middle of the field. Of course you have our top defensive backs covering their uh, top two guys. But you gotta, well, all the action so far that has ruined Widener's chances on defense have been over the middle. And uh, through the running game, uh, they really have to protect that, uh, that area of the field. That's, the, that's where all of the dirt and grime's gonna be, but it's where the ball's most likely gonna end up. Yeah, that's right. We've seen the pass to the sidelines from Wilmer have gone out of bounds. So he's gonna be looking in the middle. Great point. Uh, Nick and hopefully Widener can hear that we'll see <laughs> but hopefully they will take your advice I'll also expect uh, Brandon Harper to do some more work across the middle as he's done phenomenal along with the likes of uh, Stacy Sunnerville yeah that's right Nick Stacy and Brandon have been this whole defense so far as it is second and ten here Wilmer dropping back, looking for Bailey, it's intercepted. Intercepted by Widener. He's Sean going Titus from the 30 to the 40. Titus going down all the way to the sideline. I believe he fumbled the ball. Now they're saying he stepped out. He might have stepped out of bounds. Oh boy, what a commotion. Widener's uh, bench is trying to dictate the call here. Titus intercepted it, and then I believe fumbled around the 30. Sean Titus was down on the ground when he caught it, so he could have been downed on that play before the whole run. Uh, this is an interesting predicament for the uh, refs to solve. As the refs seem to be con uh, con conferencing in the uh, in the opposing red zone, Chris Smallwood trying to put his input into this call, and the refs having none of it. Silence here in the stadium as a lot of people are waiting this call. Bring in the replay booth. Where you at? Has anybody got a deck of cards? All right, no. Nope, Here's the call. Let's see what happens. <laughs> All right. Just Is kidding, it? folks. Uh, they are talking to the coach first. Has anybody got a deck of cards? I think we're going to be here a while. Thank you. 
The positive fumble to Widener trying to check out. Wow, that's great. All right, big break for Widener as they recover the ball. Wow, Widener getting a big break right before Sean Titus fumbles the ball. He did step out of bounds. Delaware Valley Aggies, I'm sure they are upset with the call, but Widener's offense will be coming out here. That is Wilmer's second interception thrown on the day. Mm, Got to imagine he's rattled a little bit at this point. Yes, that's right. Some big stuff from uh, cornerback Sean Titus. Definitely making his presence known early as Widener now picks up their second turnover of the game. Yeah, that's right, Nick. Sean uh, picking up his eighth interception of the year as Seth Klein is ready to lead this offense to possibly another score. A very impressive show of defense by this Widener Pride. Klein will drop back. Oh, gets out of a move and then gets sacked. Big hit there. Boonstra. Yeah, that was Luke Boonstra from Mawa, New Jersey on the uh, huge hit there. Second and 16. We felt that one from the uh, booth. Oh, man. As Klein will hand this one off. As I believe Morrison will pick up what they lost on the sack. Third and 10. That was a gain of six yards. Picking up what they uh, lost on the sack. Yes, I believe uh, Tarrant Morrison picked up those yards. Which he did, yes. As it's third and 10 for the pride. Klein will drop back, throws a, oh boy. Big play. He threw it short to Tarrant Morrison. He had a big hole, but he just got tripped up. By Danny Wynn. By Danny Wynn. Danny Wynn now has uh, five tackles, or six tackles today. Fourth and eight, Danny Wynn. He's the top defensive player for DelVal. He showed why there. Definitely some big stuff. As the punt Whoa. from Bennett took a whole lot of spin on that. Morrison is a few inches short on the hop as that would have propelled the drive deeper into the end zone or the red zone I'm sorry yeah that was that was interesting right there as Delval's offense coming out now Wilmer trying to make sure he does not throw yet another interception right definitely have to watch um, Del Val's passing defense as they seemingly give up as many passing yards as Widener's but you might have to try to maybe stick to the air a little bit more as Del Val's uh, passing defense is a little bit weaker yes that is right as there's penalties as Smallwood went into motion it's a very tough game for Widener to keep their control over as they seemingly give up a yet another uh, penalty. As uh, we are having some more technical difficulties there, uh, <laughs> I believe I led our producer into the wrong room. Oh, well. As uh, second and five, uh, ball on the 24 now. Wilmer looking for a big play. As I don't have much to go uh, to get that first down. That's right, Wilmer will drop back, finds a hole, 
oh, man gets taken down. down. He might have uh, picked up a few yards. He was at the 25th yard line, I'd say. We just got two more for that for before that first down. As it's third and six, as it is third and three to go. As Wilmer will throw, that's Ooh. caught. That's Mike Jensen, and that's a first down for the Delval Aggies. Uh, first down there. Mike Jensen, you know, Delval has so many uh, weapons for wide receivers. It's not just Rasheed Bailey. It's really not. Um, uh, Motorella also, they have a, a plethora of people to pass to and or use utilize the run game with. They're That's a very right. dangerous team on the offensive side of the ball. That's right, as it is first and 10. Wilmer will give this a small one who takes a big hit, takes a spin out of it, and then a gang tackle on him. At least seven Widener probably defensemen coming in on him. Smallwood, I'm pretty sure, lost a yard or two on that one as it is second and 11. Chris Smallwood really hasn't been, he's had two explosive plays. Other than that, Widener's really kept him under control. Yeah, they've really kept a wrangle on the run game, but they really need to focus on who's, uh, who's running where and preventing the passes across the middle. That's right. Rashid Bailey uh, in the close part of your screen by the Widener sideline. Watch for him here on second and 11. There's a throw to Bailey and it's intercepted. It's intercepted. Sean Titus with his second interception of the game. What on earth kind of throw was that from Wilmer? <laughs> They're throwing oh, ducks. They're throwing ducks. Another, another pick by Titus. Definitely. Sean Titus, he might hit double digits in interceptions <laughs> today. Yeah. <laughs> second interception, tacking on his ninth. Wow. Did not expect that. An impressive, that was, impressive I time. I believe he was looking for Bailey. That was just a poor throw as Klein will drop back. Oh. Klein, a big throw to Davis. It's caught. The catch. It's caught. No, no, no it is not. Off. Oh, Anthony Davis. Oh. Incomplete. It's getting heat. It's oh, Brian it's getting spicy. Carter has been all over Davis today, and another good play from the uh, senior cornerback Brian Carter. This game has just been absolutely insane. An absolute rivalry between these two. That's you, right. And this you got has been probably the most exciting football game I've announced. Same as it is my second. <laughs> As Klein will hand this to Lafayette. As a three yard gain for Cuve Lafayette to make this third and seven. The ball is on the 50. You gotta imagine uh, Klein airs it out here or throws a, a, a good old play action, hopefully to they're, are they, they're exposing the left side. It's wide open right now. That's right. Klein will drop back, looking for someone. Oh, that pass is almost intercepted. No flag. No flag, no flag on that one as Blaine Price got taken down. So we are going to fourth and seven. Uh, our prediction earlier about being a high-scoring game, so far it's been pretty low scoring. Both defenses mm -hmm. are playing strong. There's been a handful of uh, poorly played plays like uh, Aaron Wilmer's passes today. But you gotta, uh, you gotta imagine, if you remember when we called the game against Wilkes, they also started out slow and then the floodgates opened. I assume that this is what's, what'll happen today as well. That is true as there's a punt, it was almost blocked. 
by Cleveland. Bailey will make the catch there and will get hit out of bounds. In the in their own red zone, Delaware, Delaware Valley will start. Nick, do you think Widener has listened to you? Do you think they've been watching the middle now? I think uh, they're starting to pick it up a little bit more as uh, they've seemingly picked off two key intercept or had two key interceptions across the middle. So I think Sean Titus is definitely uh, starting to get a handle on uh, on Aaron Wilmer. Yeah, that's right, Nick. As it is a first and 10. The ball is on the 14. I believe this game is sold out from what we can see here from the <laughs> announcer's booth. There's a lot of people around As everywhere. The ball is given a small one. Oh, boy, here it goes. As that was close to a first down, Widener making sure it was not an explosive play. As nine yard pickup, it is second and one. I believe the ball will be on their own 23. Absolutely tough uh, running back to play against. You gotta expect that they're gonna continue to try and go to Smallwood. Absolutely, uh, as they do right there. I believe he's got a first down. Around the 27 yard line, Delval looking to uh, move up the field quickly on this drive as Smallwood is uh, definitely tearing up this defense and he's looking active on this drive. He didn't really look that active last drive. Mm -hmm. Definitely got to imagine that they're starting to wake up at this point. Yes, that's right. As it is first and 10 here on the 27, Wilmer finds Bailey. Bailey will get hit to the outside. Only a few yards. I think uh, Jamal Goodman gets the tackle on that. Yeah, good play by Jamal there. As it is second and five. Uh, Nick, this is coming from my opinion. I believe Widener has really shut down Bailey today. Mm -hmm. They uh, they absolutely have. Uh, I think that's one, probably one of their main goals was shutting down their top receivers to more focus, for, uh, more or less focus on Smallwood. That's right, as Wilmer will drop back. Wilmer, oh boy, finds Bailey. Bailey, that's his first big play of the day, so Widener fans, I apologize for that uh, curse as big play there for Bailey, first down. And again, you see Delaware Valley continually abusing the open space in the middle of the field. Yeah, that's right. It was a 25-yard play. They keep going to Bailey despite their struggles. They keep going to him, and now Bailey's uh, showing why he's one of the big-time wide receivers in this conference. As the ball will be given to Smallwood as they stuff him on that play. Great job by the Widener defense. They're definitely uh, utilizing the blitzes and uh, keeping Smallwood in check as he could make or break this game. Third and six, I believe. Not even. No. I think it's the uh, scoreboard fooled me on that play. <laughs> Gotta watch out, there's a sneaky scoreboard. As Wilmer will drop back, as that ball is almost intercepted. Monterella was targeted there. Tyrone Bundy, very close to picking up that interception off of the uh, tip. Great play. By Widener's defense there as it is third and nine now for Adele Val. Widener showing blitz as Wilmer will drop back. He escapes one Widener player. The throw to Bailey is caught and it's a first down for Del Val. There is pressure from Gerard Stewart there, but Wilmer's uh, versatility and quickness was able to escape him and found Rashid Bailey on that play. Very, uh, very close call as Widener would have definitely had the upper hand if they brought down Wilmer. 
I've got to keep to my sentiments in the, in the fact that Widener has to keep uh, Wilmer uh, in his pocket. That's right, the ball will go to Smallwood. He will pick up about three or four yards. As it is second and seven for the Aggies. Smallwood only picking up about three yards there. As uh, Burns and Smallwood have a bit of an exchange getting up off the ground. Yeah, I believe Chris is uh, probably getting frustrated that he's not tearing this game up right now. So I believe a Let's Go Aggies chan has uh, erupted here at Leslie Quick Stadium. A very wild crowd As here. Wilmer will drop back, oh. trying to escape the pressure. The throw was looking for Bailey. Bailey got hit right by the sideline. That he, uh, ball is out of bounds. I believe he was tripped up by either Amir Sorrell or to Trevon Barnes. Yeah, that's right. We had to uh, we had to lean over to see that one as <laughs> being in the press box. There are some limitations as it is third and seven ball on the 32-yard line. Uh, just a reminder, besides this championship game, this uh, game also entitles an automatic playoff berth yes. for either one of these teams. So the pressure is mounting with every passing second as we have a... Delval using their second timeout of the half as uh, they had too many men on the field at the time. Yeah, uh, you know, Delval has to keep that in check as well. I'm sure their head coach will keep an eye on that as they did have to waste the timeout on that uh, situation. Mm -hmm. If you've had to pick out a one is Google time. I have to say Bailey because he's really turning it on now. But Wilmer's been, uh, he's been the key. He's made a few runs. Mm -hmm. You know, he's found Bailey. He's found uh, Martarella as well. So it's, Wilmer's the uh, big playmaker even, for this team. Yeah, even though he has have given up three interceptions, he is keeping this team in the game. That is true. As Smallwood is wide open by the 30. Oh, and he just trucked a player. That's a first down. Chris Smallwood just buried a Widener defender. Rick. Oh, boy. Lack of a wrap and dragon. Uh, very close call. Jamal Goodwin. Uh, he might try to get a number on that truck. He just got Ooh. drilled. Ugly, ugly hit. Definitely got to learn how to tackle on that one. As Smallwood will get the ball again, Ooh. he trucks another player. I believe that was Jamal again. Chris Smallwood. We've seen his, uh, you know, versatility with his sharp cuts, but look at that power he's been using. Oh my lord! Definitely using that to his advantage. Even though he's 5'11 and 205 pounds, he's definitely showing what happens when he gets speed going. Yeah, Chris, uh, Chris Smallwood, all of a sudden showing off, getting active this drive, showing off his talent. As this is a dangerous play here, that ball will also go to Smallwood. As this time, Widener will gang up on him and take him down to the ground. I believe Brendan Jones came in late trying to strip Smallwood. Smart play, but a little too late. Uh, third down. 
and I believe four yards. Max Stella now out of this game. A new wide receiver will be coming in for Delaware Valley as we get a series of defense chants for this Widener defense. That's right. Wilmer, he's going to drop back. Oh, he fumbles. He fumbles. He fumbles. But there's a flag on the play. Widener, Widener saying they have it. There's a flag on the play. As it is Widener ball, Aaron Wilmer. As the Widener fans seem to be coaxing the Delaware Valley fans that are in, in, their, uh, in their stands. Aaron Wilmer, his fourth turnover of the game. Nick, this guy is supposedly the best quarterback in the conference. to him and he seems to get it as he gets the first down. And it is a first down. Wick, wicks again for with the Widener. Good play. Luckily, I'm not a football coach, so <laughs> good thing I didn't uh, make that call. They go to the no, uh, a seeming no huddle as they're about to go back into it. Klein will. Oh, oh he throws an interception. interception. It's intercepted by Delval, and it is a touchdown. Rashad Lighty. Oh, man. Wow, Seth Klein throws it straight to Lighty as he will catch it and take it in for the touchdown. It is 13 to 7. Lady saw this coming from a mile away, and he picks it out clear, clear as day as he uh, takes the pick six for Delaware Valley. That's right, uh, the Widener fans uh, getting a little rowdy here. We've never really seen this spirit from Widener fans, so that's good. But, wow, Snyder will line up for the field goal here. Rashad Lighty read that play very, very well. He knew that was coming as that was almost blocked but it is good as it is 14 to seven DelVal. Oh man. Guys, forget about watching Alabama, Mississippi State this weekend. This is the game to watch. This has been absolutely incredible. Nothing but excitement for these first two quarters so far. That's right, Nick. A very frustrating play for this Widener Pride as they hope to uh, pick it back up. as a huge momentum boost there for Del Val. Wow, Rashad Lighty. He is, we talk about, you know, Del Val's defense, and we talk about Danny Wynn. We should talk about Rashad Lighty as well. He has eight and a half sacks on the season. He leads their team in sacks. He is a tremendous player, and he made a tremendous play right there on that interception. 
wow. It's rough to see something like that as uh, Widener had just uh, tried to capitalize on that fumble from Wilmer. But but now we uh, try to get back into it, hopefully swing things back our way with it as Anthony Davis is about to take this kick. Yeah, uh, DelVal's defense saw their quarterback turn over the ball four times already. They figured let's make Seth Klein turn over the ball as well. Do you think the weather has come into play as a factor during this game? Um, I would think so. For, I mean, I know for me, even though I'm in a booth, it's still a struggle to hold this microphone. But <laughs> it, it, the cold weather makes it a lot harder to, you know, get a good grip on the ball, things like that. And especially for quarterbacks, that could have been a reason why Wilmer fumbled the ball earlier. So no. we will... Uh, hopefully see that it won't affect Widener's offense as they will march out back onto the field after just a quick conversation with one of their coaches. Right. And uh, luckily for Widener, the uh, ball, the kick happened to go out of bounds, so now they get to start from relatively good field position at the 35. As there is the throw, as Taylor. Hicks Taylor will make the play there. A gain of 12, first down for Widener, so good, good start for them. They're moving the chains on this drive. I'm gonna try to stay silent as I read this defense and make my analysis. As Klein will drop back, Klein trying to evade some defensive players will throw that out of bounds as it will be uh, second and 10 now for the Pride. Smart move by Klein as that could have been potentially fatal for them as because uh, they do not need another turnover at this point of the game. The Aggies do have a man down. Uh, the refs will take an injury timeout. I didn't even notice he was down, so yeah. it's a good thing the refs did. And blew the whistle, I believe, Muhammad is down for DelVal, unfortunately. We have heard that he does have injury issues as well, so hopefully he will be okay as both uh, coaches will talk it over. Uh, what do you think the key to uh, Widener's offense will be if they want to get themselves back into this game, Nick? It seems that the offensive line has been breaking down a lot recently. So what they want to do is to continually flush out their linemen, maybe even throw in one or two tight end se uh, setups, maybe even start running the ball a little bit more because it all starts and ends with the offensive line. If Seth Klein does not have his time uh, to set and throw the ball, then we have a very, very impatient quarterback in our hands. Yes, that's right, Nick, as Ahmed Muhammad will make his way to the sideline. As you know, we've seen Klein under pressure a lot today. Right. So that's definitely a good point you hit on there, as it is. Believe second and 10, Klein will drop back, looks for and I believe they're gonna give it to Taylor. Him. They're gonna give it to him. They're gonna give it to him. What a catch. A big, and a late big break hit. for Widener. A late hit on DelVal. That's going to be a penalty. Wow. Big break there for Widener. They'll move up 15 yards. This is where Widener definitely needs to capitalize. If not a touch, they need points this drive if they want to start to swing things back in their favor. That's right as it is first and 10 on DelVal's own 25 now. Look how far Widener's moved up this drive. A big penalty against Delaware Valley as Widener can capitalize here. As Klein will drop back, looking for someone. What a catch, that's Taron Morrison. Morrison going in and scores, touchdown Widener. Oh wow, Taron Morrison adding his second touchdown of the game. Seth Klein's first touchdown of the game. Great run by Tarrant Morrison. You have a breakdown in the secondary on the right side as all of the receivers initially went left. So a good, a good throw by Klein, an even better catch by Morrison, and a good run leading in for the score. Yes, that's right, Nick, as 
O'Hara will tack on an extra point to tie this game at 14 with just over two minutes to go here. I'm sure we will see the two minute warning in effect, but wow. An absolute explosive first half as we have a tie game. You don't know what to expect so far. Yeah, we, we just don't know what's gonna happen, you know. We predict certain things and they haven't really happened. I certainly did not expect a pass that Tarrant Morrison mm -hmm. run all the way in there for a touchdown. So, you know, Widener's really been playing well, and that was a great catch by Tarrant Absolutely. Morrison as well. Kind of uh, pulling, pulling the ball from behind. Yeah, Klein kind of misread him a little bit, but Morrison's hands, great job there. Making the most out of it. That's right, as the kicking unit will be coming back out here for Widener. Tyler Bing will be back to return this one. A very, a very good score, uh, a great opportunity for Widener as now as they, if they can seemingly hold the tie into the second half, they will get the ball after we return from the break. That's right as Number Fuller Williams will return this and he's taking it off and what a hit. Oh boy. Widener getting fired up. What a hit from Bundy there as it is now with 157 to go here, first and 10 for the Aggies. An absolutely wow. crushing hit. That was nasty. That's right. Let's hope Widener can uh, keep an eye on Wilmer in this two minute drill here as Wilmer will drop back, looks for Martorella, and that pass is incomplete. Martorella tried to uh, hurl that one in, unfortunately. He could not, as it is second and 10 for the Aggies. Man. Now Bobby Martorella, he's been targeted a lot. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, we could see Rasheed Bailey, but now Bobby Martorella, he has one touchdown already as right. well today. So he's been a big factor in this first half for the Aggies. Between Martorella and uh, Mr. Bailey, we have uh, very tough opponents as Smallwood takes the ball again. Smallwood will get hit around the 40. As I was so gonna say, uh, Bailey and Mart uh, Martorella definitely the key focuses of these Widener defensive backs. That's right, Nick, as a timeout was called after, after the Smallwood tackle. Yeah, after the uh, five yard run by Smallwood. Uh, they might actually give him another yard on that one. Make it a uh, third and four. So Widener's going to need a big defensive break right here. Absolutely. You got to imagine they ramp up the pressure here, but keep some men back. Maybe throw a few blisses here.
yard play for Mr. Smallwood. I think I think Delaware Valley starting to catch on that the passing game may be a little more helpful against Widener. Especially short passes. Smallwood done well as that long throw looking for Martorella. That is incomplete. Martorella and uh, Bailey were both back there. Mm -hmm but that ball was way overthrown by Wilmer as it is now second down for the Aggies. Mm -hmm. Kashawn, uh, Kashawn Garns definitely on top of the coverage there as uh, he was looking at both Martorella and Bailey in the end zone. He could have, I think he might have uh, also been trying to keep an eye on the football, but was more focused on Martorella. Yes, that's right, as it is second and 10. Wilmer will hand this off to Smallwood, who will run into some, uh, I believe he ran into one of his blockers into that play, so he will only get a yard or two. As a timeout was issued there, I believe, by, uh, by Widener. Widener. Nick, what do you think Widener's, uh, Widener's game plan is? Uh, the game plan? Yeah, right now to make a big stop on third and nine. Basically what they have to do is they have to try to force the ends around to confuse uh, Wilmer. If they, could, if they could put as much pressure on the defensive line, maybe spread out the linebackers and keep man on the defensive, uh, keep the defensive backs man tight, uh, they absolutely have to force Wilmer to scramble where he has seemingly made more or most of his mistakes today. Yes, that's right. You know, wh when he is scrambling, he has not been throwing the ball nearly as well. Uh, he's also fumbled in a scramble as well. So very uh, good point for you to hit on there as it's third and nine on the 29 yard line here of Widener. This is a big play uh, towards the end of this first half. Yeah, they're scrambling the line. Tyler Bing is in motion as Wilmer will drop back. Wilmer! Oh, that ball was deflected. Caught by Shakur Phillip. And incomplete, I believe. Great play by Shakuri Phillip. Get his hands in the air, and that's what he did there. Great play. Very smart move, and I think they may be going for a field goal. This is going to be a gutsy call here from Del Valve. They go for it, and they are going for it. Widener's, Widener's fans are pumped. Del Valve's fans are pumped. This is a gigantic play right here. Wilmer will drop Rush. back. Wilmer, deep throw to Stella, oh, and he, he fumbles the ball. They're going to call it incomplete. Incomplete. Stella got drilled. Oh, and he's down, and he's slow to get up. Wow, Ooh. as one of the uh, DelVal trainers is coming out to look at Stella now, he's had some injury problems this season for DelVal. He's going to try and walk it off. That was a crushing blow. That's probably why he dropped the ball. Utterly leveled by Widener's defense. I, I could see that coming from a mile away. Uh, Wilmer definitely putting Stella in a bad spot. Yeah, that's right. Stella will hobble off the field as, wow, oh. what a crushing hit by Widener's defense. I'm not sure if that was the wind or the hit, but I got shivers. That's right. As Klein will now drop back. Klein. Oh, in between. I believe he was looking for number 82. Eric Sharp. Eric Sharp. Ball will uh, bounce off the ground and fall to Anthony Davis. As it is second and 10 for the Pride. I think going along with the crowd, Klein might be a little too excited. That's why he overthrew him. That's right, as Klein, Klein's going to scramble as he will uh, slide to the 45. And they will call a timeout now with 30 seconds left. Widener really tempting fate here as they call yet another timeout. They're definitely trying to 
add to the game. They really want to make sure they take a lead and then get the ball back. That's right. I think I think Klein is getting very anxious, as you've noted. You saw right before that scramble, he looked very anxious, and he went in hard on that play. Mm -hmm. So it's a third and four. Uh, got, 30 got, seconds left. You got to imagine they either, if they're going to run the ball, uh, which I don't think they'll do here on third down. If they do, they'll look to run it outside and uh, on the edge, and they'll also they'd also look for passes along the edge as well. That's right. So third and four here, ball on their own 35. Oh, oh. uh oh, ugly. That could be an offsides call. Oh, oh wow. A false start on Widener. That could have uh, been what got Del Val to move. So surprised they're at nine now. Very surprised they're still not going to try to run at the clock. As Klein will drop back. A oh. short little play. He was looking for uh, Cuve Lafayette. That was deflected as it is fourth and nine. And now Widener is going to be forced to punt the ball. A very dangerous situation as they have very little time left before the half. If they they could have just downed it and went to, to the locker room. Just easy as that. Unfortunately, for some reason, they did not. So now they're hoping we get a deep punt here. That's right, as uh, Rashid Bailey is back to return it for Delval. That was almost tipped as that is bouncing and that will, beautiful punt there. That is around the 22, 23 yard line. Hopefully Delval will just sit on this and uh, go to the locker room. But I, I don't know that because they're not getting the ball back at the start of the next half, you could imagine that they, were, they might risk something here. That's First right, up, Nick. We have Michael Bennett coming out of Maple Glen, Pennsylvania. He is studying business here at Widener. Out next is Kevin Burns from Collingdale, Pennsylvania. He is studying mechanical engineering here at Widener. Coming up next is Dijon Davidson from Poughkeepsie, New York, studying criminal justice. Out next is the All-American wide receiver from Upland, PA. He is studying sports management. It is Anthony Davis. Coming up next is John DiBiase from Mount Laurel, New Jersey. He is studying criminal justice here at Widener. Coming up next is Brian D. Giovanni from Glen Mills, Pennsylvania. He is studying mechanical engineering. And now coming out is Richie Eppelman from Chester Springs, PA. He is studying criminal justice. Out next is Tyler Glover from Darby, PA, also studying criminal justice. Out next is Anthony Green from Pensgrove, New Jersey. He is a business major here at Widener. Walking out next is one of our captains here on the Widener Pride football team, Brandon Harper coming out of Clementon, New Jersey. He is a sports management major. And coming out next is our second captain for the Widener Pride football team. He is Cuvay Lafayette coming out of Wilmington, Delaware. He is a business major. Coming up next, we have Josh Marcou coming out of Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, uh, studying communication studies. He is joined by his lovely mother, Bonnie. Coming out next is Adam Marcucci from Sicklerville, New Jersey. He is a sports management major. Walking out next is the very talented running back, Tarrant Morrison from Smyrna, Delaware. He is a business major here at Widener. Coming up next is Amir Sorrell out of Port Norris, New Jersey. He is studying criminal justice here at Widener. Walking out next is Gerard Stewart from Bowie, Maryland. He is another criminal justice major here at Widener University. Coming up next is Kyle Twitty from Blackwood, New Jersey. 
He is yet another sports management major here at Widener. Walking out next is Kayshawn Garns from Poughkeepsie, New York. He is a criminal justice major. And last but certainly not least is Nicholas White hailing from Belmore, New York. He is studying criminal justice here at Widener University. As it is second and five here, Widener's on the 43 yard line, their own 43. As Dave or uh, Hicks Taylor was in motion, there is Morrison will get a first down on a run. Beautiful play by Tarrant Morrison. Big run. Uh, great start for uh, for Toronto coming back into the second quarter, into the third quarter, I should say. Yeah, Tarrant Morrison. You know, last game against, or the last time we saw him against Wilkes, he played phenomenal. He's playing very well today. Absolutely. As Klein will hand this one off. A huge speed burst there. I don't believe that was Morrison. It was. It was? It surprisingly was, yeah. Oh, it was. Okay. So he was just uh, short there as it is second and six. As a handoff, oh, Morrison, by a Morrison. big burst, and he gets taken down, but will get the first down. As I believe Phil Sampson took him down there. Great run by Tarrant Morrison. Right. See the offensive line starting to open things up for Widener, as Morrison has had a few chances now to get big breaks for some yardage. That's right, as Klein will drop back, the pass to Davis is, oh, incomplete. Anthony Davis, he had it in his hand and then bobbled it, bobbled it, dropped it all the way to the ground, and then the ball hit the ground, and that is, uh, that is incomplete, wow. That would have been a huge turning point for Widener if he was able to hold on to that ball and coming down with it. Yeah, Got to could, imagine. You could see Anthony Davis very emotional about that play. Got to imagine they go back to him at some point. As Lafayette will get the carry from Klein. He'll pick up some yards. Widener uh, fans applauding his efforts as it is third and five for the Pride. They are on DelVal's own 21 yard line right now. So offensively, they're really trying to get some big points here. Klein's going to drop back. He finds Lafayette, who gets hit. And who else but Danny Wynn for DelVal? He's been there the entire game, picking apart uh, anything that could be broken into a big or turned into a big play. Yeah, that's right. It was a big stop there from Wynn as I believe they might, Klein staying on the field 
So they will be going for it. Cuve Lafayette will be next to him. I believe Widener has had a, a measly 30% on fourth down, so let's hope that changes for the better. Another wide receiver is in as well as he's looking for someone. Klein's looking, he's scrambling. Klein the throw, and it is caught in caught. Touchdown. It's touchdown. What a play from Widener there. I believe it was Anthony Davis on the catch. As we see some Widener fans throwing the Johnny Money uh, taunt to the Delaware Valley ones. Oh, wow. Seth Klein showing his patience there, finally finding an option and getting the touchdown. Great job by Widener there as the kick is good. It is 21 to 14. The Widener fans trying to poke some fun at the Delaware Valley fans here in front of us. This is going to be one heck of a finish here. You got to really give credit to the offensive line there who was able to not only fend off def uh, defenders coming in, but uh, being able to not draw a penalty against them. So very big props to the offensive line that I thought would step it up, and they definitely have. Yeah, that's right, Nick. They're very disciplined as well. You know, no holding calls or anything on that. Widener really played great that drive, and once again, great patience from Klein, and uh, patience did pay off there as it is now 21 to 14, Widener. We have a, a, a very exciting game continuing on. I'm, I'm excited to see what happens. That's right. As we will see what kind of kick uh, Widener will do here. They do kick it short sometimes, but I think they're going to try and kick it deep here, possibly to uh, Tyler Bing. Ooh. Big kick from O'Hara. Big punt. Oh, he fumbles it in the Fuller end zone. Williams couldn't, couldn't hold on to it, hit his hands and went in the end zone. And we have a penalty he in the backfield. Up to his own 15 as there's a flag on the play. As two flags are on the field now, as we wonder what happened on that play. As the refs uh, conference. And an illegal block in the back called on Del Val. So their already short return will be even shorter. Big stuff for Widener as a, a very pivotal defensive stop would uh, greaten the chances for a Widener victory today. The ball is spotted on the three yard line. So now Widener expect a blitz. I think Brandon Harper needs to get around this uh, offensive line and really hand it to either Wilmer or Smallwood. Wilmer will drop back, finds Bailey. Who uh, takes a step Bailey back and walks out of bounds. Go out of bounds. That's a first down, I believe. About an 11, 12 yard play on that play. As I, interesting play call there by Wilmer. I think a lot of people thought because they're so far back, they'd give it to Smallwood and see what he could do. Uh, unfortunately for Widener, he did throw it to Bailey instead as it's first and 10 on DelVal's own 14. Wilmer is going to drop back. He's going to scramble now. Fights off some pressure. The throw incomplete. And thankfully no call as we already see a very much more disciplined Widener pride. Yeah, that's right. No call on that play. Goodwin and uh, Ragona were both covering, I believe that was Bailey. Mm -hmm. And uh, Ragona did, or not Ragona, my mistake, Titus. Yes. It was Titus and Goodman. And I believe Titus did fall into uh, Bailey on that play. Luckily, there was no interference call. Right. Definitely taking advantage of the ref placement going on. It's a second and 10 on their own 14. Wilmer will drop back, find Smallwood. 
Smallwood will get pushed out of bounds by number 12, Tyrone Bundy, for I believe a yard or two. If not, then no gain. Do you think uh, that Delaware Valley has kind of uh, scouted out Widener a little bit by straying away from the run? Yeah, I think so. Wilmer's been scrambling as well, but you know, you're seeing Smallwood get out there and block and get out there and uh, receive more than run. So it is third and nine now on Widener's 15. Wilmer will drop back. Wilmer's scrambling Ooh. once again and won't get sacked. Big play as Widener was again looking to strip Wilmer. That's right, no uh, flag on that play as well. So they're getting lucky as Snyder will come out to punt to either uh, Sorrell or Anthony Davis who are waiting uh, at their own 45 yard line for this punt. There's a punt. Ooh. Oh, oh it's a punt. short one. That's dropping at their own 40 and almost hit one of the uh, players on the sideline for Widener. So Widener has great field possession already coming out of uh, or going into this drive. Widener's uh, really lucked out on this drive as uh, they start within, within the uh, Delaware Valley's 50 and uh, they have a real opportunity to continue and maintain this lead that they've uh, essentially been given or been able to take. That is right, Nick, as Widener's offense having a meeting right now right before they set, on, set out onto the field. This could be a big breaking point for them. They could go up by more than one touchdown, which could be key right now. Absolutely. As the fans really getting rowdy here as Klein will walk in, and that was almost intercepted. Uh, uh, Philip Bragona was targeted there. It was tipped and then almost caught. Luckily for Widener, that was uh, not caught. Absolutely. Bragona's really got to get a handle on that. You can't allow tips to happen in the secondary, otherwise you're warranting uh, an interception. That's right, as Klein will hand this one off to Morrison, who will go to about the 40. He'll gain a few yards there. As it is third and five now for the Pride. Watch Anthony Davis on this play. He is uh, number five close to the Widener sideline. He could uh, make a big play on this play here. As Klein, Klein, oh, he airs deep it out. throw. Oh, it was look, he was looking for Hicks Taylor, but just overthrown there as it falls into the end zone. It's fourth and five. Uh, I believe the special teams unit will be heading out. A very uh, reckless play, but a very close call as Widener could have taken a touchdown. Yes, that's right, Nick. As I believe that is O'Hara, correct me if I'm wrong, out there to punt. Oh, and it's a fake punt! It's a fake punt! Oh my god! Oh, wow! Oh, he's going! He's going! And, he's and it's a touchdown! Oh, wow! Max Cutler on the touchdown for Widener! Absolutely insane! Wow. Nobody saw it coming. On their own. Wow, I, I can't believe it. Some initially risky play calling leads to an even riskier play, which pays off in the end. An absolute blazer. Unbelievable. This was on Delaware's 39-yard line, a fake punt, a 39-yard run for Max Culler as the extra point is good. It is 28-14. A fake punt run touchdown for Widener. Absolutely oh. huge. Oh, my God. What a gutsy call there. As the Widener faithful are saying they can't hear 
They cannot hear the Delaware Valley fans anymore. They have gone silent after that play. What a crushing blow to the Delaware Valley Aggies. Absolutely. It was insane. I, I can't even say that I saw that coming because I was, I, was I was about to drink my water. I thought the ball had gone up, but it turned. It, you just see him out of nowhere. It was insane. A surprisingly risky play calling on the third down, and then even riskier play calling ends up paying off for Widener on fourth down. What a shocking play. I still Still can't believe it. Gutsy, gutsy call. And Max Cutler almost got taken down around the 15. Although he would have had um, the first down, it was an impressive uh, feat to stay on his feet. That's right. Incredible balance got him to stay on his feet and run that into the end zone. Huge play for Max Cutler. It was Rasheed Bailey back there basically defending the whole Delaware uh, end zone. And unfortunately for Del Val, they did not make it as Fuller Williams will take it to the 20 Ooh. and he, about the 23, 24 and until he gets taken down. And he seemingly tried to run over his own blocker to try to get through him as well. That's right. Del Val, I think they're uh, I think they're a little nervous at this point. Weiner showing why they're the 10th team uh, in the nation right now in D3 football. Their, their defense is quite impeccable, and they're definitely showing why they deserve to be in the top. That's right. As Aaron Wilmer and this DelVal offense is coming out. A lot of pressure Wilmer coming in. Waiting. He will give it to Smallwood, who makes a nice move and then gets hit. Oh, but there's a flag on the play. Oh, oh. oh. Oh, now there's a there's a skirmish on the field. Stacy Sunnerville has to be separated by the Widener defense. Sunnerville got ran over after the play and tried to do something about it. Oh. No offsetting penalties as Sunnerville or somebody got the uh, the unprovoked face mask on the on the running back. Yeah, that's right. As it is a first and ten on the forty, uh, Delaware Valley's own forty. As Wilmer will hand this off to Smallwood again, who gets wrapped up. That was Stacy Sonerville, who is having an incredible game today. He is playing with some passion out there. He's definitely uh, probably the most excited to be out there now, as he's been hyped basically all game. He's been very hyped all game. He's been pumped up this whole time. As the ball is given to Smallwood again, he'll make it to the outside. As he's bumped out of bounds just slightly. That was second and nine. Right, he got hit right before the 50. Amir Sorrell getting run over by Smallwood on the play. That's the third time we've seen Smallwood take out a Leidner defender. As he seems to be leaving the field. As the ball is on the 48, it's third and two. We'll see what Delval wants to do here. And it's Wilmer taking it himself. Wilmer with a big break. He makes it to the 40. And around the 47, I believe, he'll get taken down. Oh, the 42? No, 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 sorry, the 38. The 38. Oh. That's right, Nick, the 38 as it is uh, first down. So three consecutive running plays for Delaware uh, Valley right there. As Wilmer will fake it to Smallwood. He'll air it out deep looking for Thomas, I believe. And it was well covered by Jamal Goodman, who smartly tries to keep him away from the ball. Yeah, Tariq Thomas was targeted there. That was uh, incomplete, so it is second and 10 at Widener's own 38. 
They've given up some yards here and there in some games, but when you have the As interceptions, you've been 19 for seven Second and 10 now. Wilmer looking looking to do something. We'll see if he'll give it to Smallwood once again, and he will fake it to Smallwood. He's getting chased by oh. Somerville. Oh. The throw. Surprisingly, no flag, uh, flag in the back as Somerville was taken down and it's, held by the uh, offensive lineman. Yeah, Somerville shaken up on that play as well. The intended receiver was number 10, Bobby Martorella. He got hit out of bounds. This has been a very physical football game, Nick. And I believe uh, Trevor Stover was the one who seemingly laid on top of Stacy Somerville. Yeah, this is a heated game at this point as it's 28 to 14 if you're just joining us with 6.57 to go here in the third quarter. It is third and 10 on Widener's own 38. Expect a big play here as uh, the linemen are even scrambling about. As Wilmer scrambling again, and he gets hit. He gets dropped by number 12, Tyrone Bundy once again. That was a sack on the play. Uh, we are going to fourth down. Absolutely great stop. Great read of the draw. Impressive play by Widener's defense yet again. This was the second play in a row where Wilmer did scramble. And we noted earlier, when he scrambles, it usually does not lead to good things for Del Val. And uh, easily shown by Widener's defense there. That's right, as uh, Snyder will punt it now for Del Val as flags are thrown. As a false start on the Aggies is called, so we will drop back even more. So I'm sure another punt for Mr. Snyder. As another punt there from oh. Snyder, he gets taken out. But no flag. No flag. Wow. Widener getting a break there. That punt went out of bounds. Mm. Essentially getting away with murder. It, it, in my opinion, it didn't look like he got really hit. It looked like he fell forward yeah. and just tripped over the uh, Widener play. Nice fake from Seth Klein. Anthony Davis just simply outran his corner, got wide open. Klein found him over the top. Touchdown, Widener. I don't know if you remember what I said at the end of the first half. But when I said the floodgates would open, I meant it. And we're seeing it right here. That's right. It's beginning. Widener's beginning to embarrass Delval now. As the kick is good, it is 35 to 14. Widener, the Widener fans are getting pumped. They're, they're, co they're still coaxing the Delval ones. And uh, definitely a reason to get hyped as Widener takes a pretty high lead. That's right. Wow, Widener's offense is starting to just be full on momentum, like adrenaline pumping. They have been perfect now in this uh, second quarter or second half, shall I say. 
absolutely fantastic, though. You, got, you really have to be impressed with how Widener has seemingly stepped up their play from the first half, as it was a really slow start for this team. Yes, that's right, Nick. Now, wh what do you think Del Val's going to have to do to get back into this and make this a thrilling game towards the end? I think their biggest problem is focusing too much on what Amir, or, or sorry, not Amir, Aaron Wilmer is doing. He seems to uh, try to take the ball himself and not exactly spread the run game out. As uh, they have, they definitely have Chris Smallwood to uh, to their arsenal, but uh, having Wilmer do too much is what's crippling them on offense. Yes, that's right. As uh, Fuller Williams will return this one for the Aggies, and he uh, changes he changes sides. He's to his own thirty, and will right before his own thirty-five uh, go out of bounds. So. Widener's uh, special teams really got after him on that, so mm -hmm. great play there as it is first and 10 uh, on Delaware Valley's own 35. Who would you attribute um, most to Widener's success thus far uh, on either side of the ball, really? Or at least in this, uh, at the start of this half. The start of the half, uh, I mean, Widener's offense has been doing good, but Stacy Sonnerville has just been a monster on defense. I feel he's had a big presence uh, this half, and I think he could be a key as Wilmer will drop back, and that is, ooh, almost the third interception of Sean Titus's day. Very, very close. Titus is, is hawk-eyeing Wilmer right now. Very That's smart right. move as Wilmer is, se is seemingly making more and more mistakes with every drive he's on. Wilmer, that was another poor throw. It wasn't near Bailey at all as Widener almost had a field day with that one. Wow. you got to you got to a, a 4C and an interception some coming soon if they keep the pressure up. As Wilmer will give this to Smallwood now, who is taken down at the 35. It looked like a gain of two yards. Uh, he, they're a little extra generous, gave him another yard. It's third and seven on their own 37. Mm -hmm. As I think, you know, Widener is going to have to anticipate a pass to uh, Rashid Bailey on this play. Right. Smallwood As Chris going Smallwood outside. goes out to wide receiver position, it goes to Mike Jensen instead, and that is a first down for Delaware Valley. Jensen's becoming a factor as well now mm -hmm. in this passing. We said they have a lot of weapons, and, you know, when they're not throwing to Bailey, Jensen's been that guy. Um, I think they're, what they're starting to realize is that they're able to spread the ball out more uh, to different receivers instead of focusing on their top two guys. Yes, that's right, as a player was in motion, but they give it to Smallwood who gets stuffed. He's losing a yard or two on that play for sure. As I... Also, you really got to appreciate how quickly Widener's defense gets to Smallwood whenever he gets the ball. It seems as soon as he touches it, all at least two or three guys are on him immediately. Yes, that's right, Nick, as it is uh, second, second down now for Del Val. Second and ten, I don't believe he lost any yards. As Wilmer will look for Martoretta or Martorella, and he will get tackled by number 14, I believe. That is Dijon Davidson. Martoretta or Martorella, shall I say, keep uh, getting mixed up with his name, but him and, you know, Jenkins. Mm -hmm. Or, and as uh, Martorella yeah, goes out, as well as uh, Rashid Bailey, I believe Danny Lopez, an, another senior for Del Val, is coming in. That's right. Third and one. We'll see what they do here. Would not be shocked if they pulled out a QB sneak. They're definitely doing a run here. I know that for sure. Tyler Bing goes in motion. They'll give it to Smallwood, Ooh. who gets stuffed before the line. A big collision there. Takes an ugly hit from behind. Surprised he isn't hurt because he got a really hard hit. 
Yeah, that's right. As number eight, Shakori Phillip had a big uh, hand in that play. As it's fourth and one, DelVal is going to go for it. And Widener's getting pumped up to keep up the energy for this team. Uh, actually, it is fourth and two. So two yards to go here. Widener's fans are pumped here. This could be a big momentum boost if they stop him. And it's Wilmer who'll take it himself. Oh, and he gets and Wilmer it. will slide down for the first down. Wilmer, slight, uh, just slight a break wrap down. around there. Slight nice breakdown in coverage as uh, Wilmer easily gets through that line. That's right. It's a first and ten now for the Delval Aggies. The ball is on their own 43. Just kidding. They are on Widener's 43 as there's 150 to go here in the third quarter. As uh, we see some communication going on between the sideline and Aaron Wilmer. As Wilmer will drop back. That's a long throw Great for pass. Bailey, oh. and it is called for the touchdown. Rashid Bailey. Trayvon. Showing why he's a dominant receiver in this league. A perfect throw from Wilmer. Wow. And uh, Trayvon Barnes got very close to breaking up the pass, but Rashid Bailey shows why he's just that dangerous. Yes, that's right, Nick. Um, we believe from reports that we've heard earlier, Rashid Bailey's been looked at by the Indianapolis Colts. He's, he's a tremendous uh, talent. athlete. Talent, yes. Ooh. Oh, that kick was almost blocked by Amir by Sorrell. Sorrell, I believe. Amir Sorrell. But Rashid Bailey finally showing why he is uh, a top receiver in this league. Outran the coverage and made a very nice catch to get into the end zone. So, Delval not out of it at all right now. 35 21. Uh, two touchdown game, but they still have time. Widener still has this uh, opportunity to capitalize getting the ball back. Uh, could easily see maybe maybe going back to the run game, maybe trying to run out the clock a little bit more, maybe uh, slow down the game a bit because you have a very fast-paced offense in Delaware Valley, and that might be Widener's uh, smartest thing to do is slow him down, keep the adrenaline down, and sl right. just slow him down in general. I feel like another score here for Widener, this thing could be over. But it's 134 here in the third quarter. If you're just joining us here, Widener up 35 to 21 uh, after an amazing punt, fake punt touchdown. Um, and then Rashid Bailey just answered with a touchdown of his own. So we will see what uh, Widener has in store for us as Snyder is about to kick it away here. And, for uh, Delval. and Anthony Davis is deep in his own red zone. And they oh, and it's an onside kick. kick. And it was recovered by Widener. There's a big hit on the play. Just before the 50-yard line, too. So some great field per, uh, some a great fieldage coming for Widener. Yeah, Widener recovered that. Great job. They're going to be on Delval's own uh, 45 now. Wow. And a penalty now on Delval. There's an offsides call, so they will have to back up five more yards. Widener will now start at Delval's own 40. And the ref kind of bobbled, like dropped the fumble the ball while removing it from the 45 yard line. It's a lot of pressure for them as well <laughs> on this big game. Calling a huge one. As Klein will hand this off to Morrison. Like Couple I said, they're, yards. they're going back to the run game. They're trying to keep it honest. Uh, gain of two. It is second eight now. They are on their own, or they are on Delaware Valley's own 38 yard line. Klein looking to, uh, you know, make a big play here. We'll see. Klein will fake it, finds Davis. There's a screen now. Oh, and Anthony Davis will get hit. Ugly tackle. Yeah. That was uh, I believe Frank Law might have gotten on that one. Mm. 
Now we see Ragona and Davis on the left side on Widener's sideline. Klein calling an audible. As it's third and two, Klein will hand it to Morrison, Ooh. who gets hit. Kuvla fade again. Wow. Oh, yes, it was Mr. Lafayette. Once again, I apologize to him for getting him mixed up all the time, but... It's hard to differentiate twos and zeros from up here. Yes. Gotta As imagine that Widener's they... going to let the time slow down here in a fourth and three. They might want to go for this. Do you think they go for it or go for the field goal? I think they're going to go for it. It's fourth and three. They're up by two touchdowns, so it's not like it's a big deal if they lose it. As... Uh, we are headed to the fourth quarter here. A lot of Widener fans uh, clapping, applauding their efforts. Right. I see no reason why you don't go for it. You're on the 33 yard line now. Nick, on this uh, a cold day, yes. I'd advise anybody to uh, have a nice brewed cup of Woo Brew coffee. Oh, absolutely. Woo Brew comes from only the finest and natural ingredients. Uh, hand handcrafted greatness and a, a good nice cup of coffee to just start your day with and then, yes. uh, you can always find yourself in any provisions on demand location here on campus uh, Widener's very own woo brew get some it's that good yes that's right Nick I could go for one right now it's still a little cold up here my my uh, voice is going but either that is... or a nice cup of hot chocolate that's right but this uh, this game's been Absolutely incredible. It's been fun to watch. So, 35-21, 15 minutes remaining. Mm -hmm. If you're just joining us here, 35-21, third quarter action packed. We had an Anthony Davis 20-yard touchdown. And a sack out of nowhere from DelVal. I was busy reading the stats here, did not even see that. It was Ethan Snyder on the hit. An awful breakdown of the offensive line. You gotta imagine that Widener will be able to recover this, but you gotta hope that Delaware Valley doesn't have the momentum swinging in their favor. That's right, so now it is a turnover on downs. Uh, DelVal will be headed out there, as I was saying, a Anthony Davis 20-yard pass touchdown, Max Cutler on a fake punt touchdown run, and then Anthony Davis on another touchdown, and then Rashid Bailey on a touchdown. So a very, very point-filled uh, third quarter. That's right. As Wilmer will now drop back. Oh, oh, oh! That pass was tipped. And uh, for those who may have missed it in the backfield, Brandon Harper pushed Smallwood into Wilmer. Very smart uh, attempt to try and. Uh, push the ball out of Wilmer's hands. Yeah, very smart attempt. That's probably why the uh, throw was so bad there. As I think you can see in his uh, body language, he was targeting who else but Mr. Bailey again. Of course. I wouldn't. I wouldn't expect him to throw to anybody else right now. As Bailey will now drop back once again. That's a deep throw and. That Nothing. is incomplete. I believe that's Tyler Bing over there. Yes, it was. He was the intended receiver, but completely overthrown. Third, third, so it's third and ten. And a few players on the uh, Delaware Valley sideline were complaining of a, a no call from the referee. Uh, There's been a lot of calls this game. However, in the second half, we really haven't seen a whole lot. Yeah, I think they might be trying to cut back a little bit on, on the harshness, maybe. Yes, that's right, Nick. As this is a big play here, obviously I think Delaware Valley is going to throw. That's what's going to get them back into this game. Third and ten on their own 43. As Wilmer will drop back, he finds oh. pressure, evades a tackler, keeps going, and the goes down. hit. He'll drop the ball out of bounds, but a big hit there. Stacy Sunderville chasing him down. Mm -hmm. 
end of fourth and out as Widener gets the ball back after this punt. I believe Tyler Glover made the big hit there. Well, man, as a lot of pursuit coming from that Widener defense. Got to be scary when all of those guys in blue are coming after you. That's right. Now Widener's going to have to be careful on this drive, though. They don't want to go three and out and give uh, Delval another big opportunity. As Ooh, Amir more Sorrell. pressure on that punt as Anthony Davis will uh, make the fair catch around the 40-yard line. For those who aren't able to know, Amir Sorrell, very close coming uh, coming within inches of another block punt. He's, he's anxious to get one right now. Yeah, we saw Amir Sorrell uh, last game against Wilkes do that a lot. Right. He's a huge player for them on special teams as the ball will be on uh, Widener's own 44. It is first and 10. Seth Klein is out there with Chris Wicks. An absolute uh, beauty of a player. As Klein will fake it to Wicks. That's a big throw oh. to Anthony Davis. Oh, he makes the catch. the catch. What a play. Oh, my God. Anthony Davis. Oh, and my Lord. Anthony Davis making some of the biggest plays here today at Quick Stadium. He that was insane. Made a catch and got hit from behind around the 15-yard line of Del Val. So it's first and 10 on their own 15. Klein. Sidearms it. Back. Ooh. No. Ooh. Davis tried for a glamorous one-handed catch. That was out of bounds. As it's second and 10 on DelVal's own 15-yard line, Anthony Davis has come to play today, Nick. Absolutely. Seth Klein, even though he's seemingly under-throwing Davis, Davis with the uh, insane amount of talent to come back for that ball, and he's gotten a few big grabs out of it. As Klein will hand this one off to Wicks. Wicks bouncing, or bouncing off at tackles and will get hit around the 12-ish yard line. But more or less, yeah. Who, which receiver has had the biggest performance so far? Oh. Rashid Bailey or Anthony Davis? I think, I think it's been Anthony Davis. He's made the bigger plays. Bailey's been, I think, targeted a lot more than Davis, but Davis has made the bigger plays. Yeah, Davis has always seen, been able to find a hole in the defense. He's and been the difference maker as there's flags on the uh, field now. There could have been a uh, false start on Del Val. I believe that's Chris Howard who received the penalty on that one. Oh, it's Widener getting called for the false start now. A rough as penalty. Yep, unfortunately, so we will uh, bring it to third and 12 now on the own 12, on Delvale's own 12. As we have a man in motion now, that is Ragona, as Klein walks, oh, and the pass was just deflected. Had to really reach out there to see what was going on as it is fourth and 12 ball and um, they're going to go for it 17. they're going to go they're going to go they're going to go for the uh, for the field goal yeah i was going to say smart play going for the field goal at this point you know you want to keep the lead but you don't want to risk anything you don't want to risk no it's you know I'm going for it on a play like that is just senseless in my opinion as o'hara will be attempting the field goal here. 34 yarder, it is up, and it is good. O'Hara will tack on some more points for Widener as it is 38 to 21 now, Pride. Absolutely uh, pivotal field goal by uh, O'Hara, who although has only had a 50% uh, field goal percentage so far, Definitely coming up clutch for this Widener pride. It's always a guessing game if he's going to make one or not. Fortunately for Widener, he makes it there. 38 to 21. Delval finds himself down two touchdowns and a field goal now. They're going to have to really act fast if they want to uh, make this an exciting finish. Absolutely. Without a doubt. Widener, uh, 
is looking at a 10 and 0 record except 12 minutes and 34 seconds stands in the way are standing in their way O'Hara has been uh, some pel pelting some good balls uh, today as he's hoping to kick another one deep that's right as there is a big kick as Fuller Williams will return this one. He's looking for a big hole. We'll see if he'll get one. He's Ooh, dancing around, and then we'll get hit around hit. the 20-yard line. Jacob Bahorner, big hit coming up on, uh, on I believe that was Bing, correct? Yeah, he came up from behind. You, you could uh, feel the power of that hit from up here, Nick. Ooh. Even though he, mi he missed the initial rush coming for Bing, he comes and circles around and throws a big tackle his way. As now 12 27 remaining here, first and 10 on Delaware Valley's own 21 yard line. We'll see what Aaron Wilmer has in store for this Widener defense. He's going to drop back. Oh. There's a big throw for Bing. That is nowhere near anybody. As Aaron Wilmer is slowly killing his own team here. He's, uh, Definitely overthrowing. He's been overthrowing his receivers all day, but that was that has been one of the worst overthrows I think I've seen from him today. I think that was the worst one I've seen this game, Nick. Uh, really a shame for him because mm -hmm. he is such a talented quarterback. But he, yeah. he really hasn't shown the Widener faithful that he is one today. Yeah, absolutely. I've got to attribute that to the defensive pressure. Wilmer will drop back Ooh. now. Us. Short throw to Chris Smallwood. That might have been tipped. Smallwood's going to get a first down and some more. I believe a 13-yard play. He will make it to the, uh, I believe, the 38. 38, yeah, the ball gets spotted at the 38. That looked like it was deflected, hence uh, Smallwood overrunning that a little bit. That's how effective Chris Smallwood could be. You could see all the uh, players trying to take him down, oh, and he just kept going. So I think if they want to get back in this game, Chris Smallwood's definitely going to have to be a key. He's uh, absolutely really good at being that elusive power back. That's right. Wilmer will step back now. He'll air it out deep. Ooh. Oh, that ball is caught by Jensen, Mike Jensen. There's a big hit there. From Titus. Uh, from Titus, I believe. From Titus. But a big play there all the way to uh, about the 42. This is the one thing I think I was afraid of most other than uh, Smallwood coming in was Delaware Valley being able to pick apart Widener's midfield coverage. That's right. It, actually, the ball's at the 38 as it's first and 10, but Mike Jensen's really been playing well today for Delaware Valley as Wilmer will drop back. He looks for Martarella. He will go out of bounds. As... A holding call on Delval. On top of the incompletion, pushes them back. It is now fourth or fourth.
fumbling, and he's very close to getting sacked. And uh, they've had a few near chances, but Widener's really aching to put Wilmer on the ground. That's right. It is third and four now. The ball is on the 32-yard line for our. Uh, Balls on Widener's own 32 yard line for Del Val. We will see what happens here as Wilmer will get this to Bailey for the first down. Where Widener was able to control the passing game in the first half, seemingly. Uh, they're, they've been breaking down coverage a lot more, going, they're optioning the blitz and Delaware Valley is intelligently countering with short passes across the middle. Bailey, uh, got tackled at the 20 yard line. So it is a first and 10 now for the Aggies as Wilmer will step back. The throw to Bailey is intercepted. Amir Sorrell with a big play. Intercepted, Amir Sorrell left up and caught it. Great play by Sorrell. He really had to use his uh, long arms there. He jumped up, made the catch. Bailey was waiting for him to miss it and so he could catch it. But no, Sorrell will make the catch. And smartly, smartly coming across and making that coverage, being able to pinpoint exactly where that ball was coming. Amir Sorrell with a very impressive interception right where, right when Widener needs it the most. Uh, less than 10 minutes left within this that game. That is the fifth interception of the day, I believe, for uh, Wilmer. Yeah, it is. As Ooh. Wicks will get hit after gaining a few yards. Uh, Nick, I think that might have put a fork in it right there. I might be the last nail in the coffin. If Widener is successfully able to control the clock for the rest of this game, they have a win on their hands, but they got to make sure they avoid bad penalties, turnovers, and uh, maybe hold on to the ball too long. That's right, as Klein will find his man. Hayden Warren. Hayden Warren. Hayden Warren, as it is. It was only a gain of a few yards there. But it is now. I believe second and four. Or it might be. Third and four, shall I say, is no. Klein. No. He will find his man. That's Wicks. Ooh, Wicks, Wicks with the, the burst of speed. The 40, the 30, the 20. And, he's and will get taken down at the 16, I'd say. Wicks has been a very short game type of running back so far when he's being utilized. But a huge play by Wicks has set up another good set of downs for Widener to have in the, uh, into the right. Wilkes, or not the Wilkes, sorry, the Widener, Delaware Valley Red Zone. Widener has their uh, hands full with talented running backs, and they showed it right there. So whistle was blown. The chains were not set. There was way too much excitement, and they did not get. And nobody, back in time. nobody happy with the the fact that the people moving the chains are too slow. That's right. Widener fans shouting, "We are the champions now!" Is that may be true? See, this is this is where Widener needs to be smart with the ball, running down the clock as much as possible. That's right. As Morrison will get taken down, maybe for maybe a gain of a yard or mm -hmm. two. I think, like I said earlier, if Widener is able to successfully control the clock, they definitely have the upper hand in this game, especially if they get the score here. That's right. Robert Getz is now in a wide receiver formation as Klein looks for Davis. Touchdown, Widener! I think, I think that was Montrell Hicks-Taylor who caught that ball. I might be wrong, but I'm not sure. I believe you are right. Montrell Hicks Taylor did make the catch. Him and Davis, three and five, look alike up top here. Thank you for that correction. <laughs> As 
listening to the Widener fans, I believe. Oh, it is. all over, but there's a blocked field goal. Oh, oh. <laughs> Delval can't get a hand on it. It'll bounce around. And now, here comes Delval. That's number 24. <laughs> Ryan Gordon. Oh. They're flipping it now. They're Another desperate. fumble. Oh, boy. Wow, Desperate for some points there. That was a fun, a fun exchange to watch. Really desperate for those two points there, Delaware Valley was. That's right. 44-21 now. Um, as I was saying earlier, listening to the fans, I do believe this one may be all over here. Mm -hmm. At Leslie Quick Stadium, you can see uh, a lot of the Del Val faithful leaving the bleachers. And I believe this is about time where the fans should start chanting. Uh, That's this, right. Although, although it's been an exciting game, I guess a lot of the Delaware Valley fans believe this is all but over. 7.47 remaining here still. So we have a... Uh, we still have a little bit of time. We'll see how long this... Uh, clock will truly be. Hopefully it'll wind down quickly. Essentially what Widener's defense needs to do here is prevent passes and prevent... Oh, see? They're chanting. This is what I was hoping for. That's right. As they are saying goodbye to the Delaware Valley fans. Oh, man. That is what we like to see. As that kick goes to... Oh, it fumbles it. Fuller Williams, who fumbled it, and then will get hit oh. around the 20 as and flags, flags are coming fly. in. Frustration mounting for this Delaware Valley team, who came in as, I believe, the favorite to win this game with all of those offensive weapons, and the tide has turned for this team. I think, uh, Nick, this is just my opinion. I think the biggest disappointment has been Aaron Wilmer today. Absolutely. A man who normally puts up, I believe, uh, darn near uh, 200, or sorry, excuse me. He puts up near 300 yards a game, and he's been absolutely miserable today. Uh, sloppy plays, passes. It's, it's not been fun for this Delaware Valley offense. That's right. Aaron Wilmer, or Wilmer, shall I say, this is not what he... Uh, would want to end his senior year with as he will hand this off to Smallwood who gets wrapped up. And I believe that was uh, Dijon Davidson with the tackle. Thanks, thankfully one of the camera people screamed his name, that's why I got it so quickly. <laughs> some, some big stuff. Yeah, that's right, you know, they've really, Widener's defense has really downplayed this exciting offense from DelVal. A lot of people still talk about Smallwood being one of the top running backs here, but he really has not done a whole lot. He will catch that one and run out of bounds though. It's been a, it's been a good game though as it is now third and Or no, that was oh. Mike Jensen. My apologies. Stacy Sonnerville got taken out by one of his own men out there. I think there was uh, Kevin Burns who ended up taking him out by accident. Yeah, one of the two of the top defensive players for uh, Widener's defense colliding with each other on pursuit of hitting Wilmer. I think that would have been a sack if that didn't happen. Absolutely. And that may have added uh, Kevin Burns, I think, leads the team in tackles for a loss with uh, 17 and a half. So that would have been another one to add to the total. Wilmer will drop back. He's looking for someone. And that's a deep throw. Oh, it is incomplete. That would have been an insanely good catch. That's right. That was Mike Jensen again 
almost making a spectacular catch. Wilmer wants to uh, keep, you know, Delval's momentum. Eh, not really momentum, I guess pride at this point. But mm -hmm. Widener, I think Widener's going to be heading in as a big favorite next season just based on this game. I wouldn't be surprised as long as they maintain the depth that they seem to have this year. And uh, we have a stoppage. That's right. Uh, whistles were blown as the refs having a catch with the football. <laughs> Ooh. It's a live game on the DelVal offense. Things are beginning to crumble for them. That's what I was going to say. They go on point system. And if you lose, but it's not like technically a blowout, as Wilmer will hike this, he will find a lot of pressure at deep throw and oh. almost intercepted. He was looking for Tyler Bing. Wilmer cannot just keep doing this. I advise, I mean, I think they should just give it to Chris Smallwood at this point. Wilmer is just finding too much pressure and throwing these awful passes. I definitely think he'd get bailed out, and I think that's what they need at this point. They just need to stop the bleeding. That's right. Aaron Wilmer and Seth Klein, the two top quarterbacks in the league heading into this game. I think Klein's uh, emerging as the top quarterback now. Wilmer has not looked impressive at all. In fact, As he's looked. He will drop back and he will get sacked. Stacy Sunnerville oh. is there. He, he's been wanting that all game and he finally gets it. That's right. He is pumped up about that one. As it is fourth and 15, Delval's going to go for this. It's their only uh, hope at this point. Well, that's how we're going to win. And Stacy Sunnerville picks up, adding up the sack totals for Stacy. This year, give him five and a half. As oh, it is 4th and 20, the ball is at uh, Widener's 42. This doesn't look promising. Wilmer's probably going to have to air this out. He'll find a lot of pressure, though. But Wilmer will scramble. There's the big throw, and that is caught. Oh, what a catch, I believe, by Martarella. Bobby Martarella. So Bobby Martarella making another big play. Heading into this game, he had 265 yards. Uh, the highest amount of yards on this team besides Rasheed Bailey's uh, 1,482 yards, but Martarella's playing well mm -hmm. as Wilmer. Looking for Bailey, the and catch and a touchdown. Rasheed Bailey, another touchdown. And Nick, you noted Anthony Davis versus Rasheed Bailey. Both of them are playing extremely well today. Absolutely. It's really hard to contain such a great uh, wide receiver. He, uh, he seemed, for the most of the game, he's seeming, I wouldn't say invisible, because he's been targeted a lot, but he's definitely been under underutilized because Wilmer wants to do just way too much. That's right, Nick, as a single season record was just broken thanks to my uh, colleagues here from Delvell's announcing team, uh, single season. Passing touchdown record was just broken by Aaron Wilmer, so congratulations to him. I guess that's one accolade he could look at from this game as it looks like they're going for a two point conversion. You gotta know when you're gonna do score a touchdown. And it's gonna be a timeout called by Delval. They wanna get things uh they want to talk things over, I suppose, as they did just waste a timeout right there. Not the uh, smartest of decisions, mm -hmm. as the Widener Pep Band has been playing musical tunes all throughout the day, as 
they are playing some faithful tunes right now. So Absolutely. A little shout out to the Widener Pep Band and. It's uh, nice to see that they have formed this this year. This is their first year. Yep. And it's uh, it's nice to have some uh, music for the fans. Of course, of course. They'd always like. There's a reason they call it a pep band, and it's to keep the fans going. That's right. They're giving us some pep. As they're actually going to go for a extra point here. Wilmer, I guess, did not want to go with a two point conversion. And it is up and good. It is 44 to 28 now. As Nick, you think Widener's going to get another touchdown here? I wouldn't honestly be surprised. I mean, they they probably will try to just ramp up the score one more time to sort of just uh, leave. Like I said earlier, put a the fi a last nail in the coffin. Maybe there, but maybe this na might this nail might be the uh, the overkill. Yes, that's right. Maybe they might just put up uh, more than 50 points this game because uh, they've done that a few times this year. Uh, there is always that question of if we see Alex Krivda in this game, the backup for Widener. But um, I think it, I believe it's a two-point or a two-possession game, basically. Uh -huh. uh, so... I wouldn't be we'll surprised because we did see him come in against Wilkes. We did, but I, I feel like maybe because of the championship, they'll keep Klein out there. But Alex Krivda will always uh, always pose a question if he will be coming in or not. Of course. Because you want to imagine you want to try to rest Klein, but you want to make sure that you still maintain the lead as we see uh, an onside kick coming. That's right, an onside kick. Uh, it's not surprising Widener. This is a lucky bounce there, but Widener will catch that one. It was just out of the hands of Bailey. As Widener will most likely, I believe, be in the playoffs next Saturday. Of course, of course. Uh, this is an automatic playoff berth for them uh, with this win. And you got to be really happy and excited for this team as they've done incredibly well. That's right, as the handoff will go to Taryn Morrison. Uh, I, I don't think they should be really having Taryn, who is sort of banged up, and he is basically their number one running back. I don't think if they're just going to... You know, that's right, Nick. Uh, plenty of players, you know. Uh, Morrison, I don't believe, is a senior. He is. Um, maybe he is. Actually, I believe he is, but they do have Chris Wicks. Mm -hmm. uh, they have Colby McMaster, Robert Getz. So, Ooh. you know, they have their hands full as Morrison got hit hard. Big hit. I believe that was by number 21, uh, Danny Wynn. Again, coming up with another tackle on the day. Yeah, Danny Wynn's been all over the place today. Absolutely all over. As it is fourth and two, uh, Rashid Bailey out there for the pawn return. You know, this game might... DelVal still has a tiny bit of a chance. Yeah. If they can get a touchdown quick here, this can be concerning. As a flag. Or a timeout, maybe. I don't think they'd be throwing a flag out for a timeout. A flag was thrown by uh, the end zone. Oh, I didn't see that. Under three minutes left in this exciting game as uh, Widener seems to be reining it in here. That's right. 
There is 2.48 left here. It's 44.28, but like I said, there is still a very small chance. High punt. But if, oh wow, this is gonna oh, bounce. Into the 10. Within the 10, around the eight yard line. Beautiful, beautiful play there. If uh, DelVal, you know, wants a chance, they're gonna have to act early. They're gonna have to score early right now. As we will see what, what players will come out here if the uh, regular starters will be out or not. Can we see a few regular starters? We see uh, Sunnerville, Harper. I think all of them are actually staying in. It's probably for the best because you want to make sure that they that they keep the explosiveness of uh, Delaware Valley on hold. That's right. 235 uh, left. Wilmer and Smallwood are back there. I expected, I think, a more competitive game than this. Hmm. But I definitely you know, think they'll make it as Wilmer will throw it to Rashid Bailey, who's running for his life. He'll make it down to the 30. You can see the safety's playing a little bit deeper. They're preventing the uh, the deep pass, but they need to def there. Excuse me, they're still struggling with the short passes. Yes, that's right. I believe there'll be uh, no huddle offense now for DelVal. As Wilmer will drop back to throw. Oh. Incomplete. Harper with Brandon the touch. Har yeah, Brandon Harper had a deflection on that play. 2.15 left. As people are beginning to uh, wrap it up here at Leslie Quick Stadium. As we will see, I, I think, you know, Delval's just going to keep on going for it. We saw some a deep run by uh, number 10, Bobby Martorello, last play as Wilmer will drop Ooh. back. He runs right through coverage. He breaks through. He He's will smart. slide down, and that's a first down. Someone thought that was a terrible slide, apparently. <laughs> interesting, interesting. As well, remember, we're not criticizing football. We're criticizing baseball for slides, apparently. Yes. As it is, he who's actually short of the first down as it's third and one. So we will see what they can do here. Wilmer will look for Rashid Bailey. That one is incomplete. We're going to fourth and one. I am... Assuming that they will go for it here. Would not be surprised. With 141 left, Widener is just staring in the face of a championship and an automatic mm. playoff berth right now. And, uh, and Del Val is completely in the other opposite direction. That's right. Surprisingly, a surprisingly uh, almost, I would say, blowout game by Widener. As Wilmer, Wilmer's going to run it. Very surprising, but this is a big one. 40 to the 30. He will slide down at the uh, 25, maybe? 25, yes. As a first down now for the Aggies. As the ball is being spotted, I believe now on the 27-yard line. Kind of. Wilmer will drop back oh. now. Looks. Oh, they're gonna call that, that incomplete. Pass is incomplete. I said this at the beginning of the game as well. I thought that the defense would definitely overtake uh, Del, Val uh, Del Valley's offense, and it seems that they uh, have at this point. Yeah, that's right, Nick. As Tyler Bing is heading out there after a break off the uh, off the sideline. <laughs> As 124 now left, second and 10 for the Aggies. They are on Widener's 27-yard line. 
As Bing is in motion, Wilmer will drop back. Wilmer evades a tackler. Wilmer's going to run. He's going to try and run out of bounds, as he will. As a first down there for Wilmer. Aaron Wilmer, uh, no turnovers this drive, Nick, so he's doing something right. Absolutely. I think, uh, I think that's because he's starting to rely more on himself as opposed to trying to stay in the pocket. Even though he's been weaker on scrambling, he's been smart enough to take it outside the pocket and even go across the line of scrimmage. That's right. Wilmer with another man in motion will drop back. He'll throw this to Tyler Bing who gets hit even though he didn't make the catch. As we are going to a third and 10 on Widener's own 14. And we are less than one minute and 30 seconds away from a Widener win and a MAC conference champion. That's right, this is something Widener's been waiting for all season and I am so honored to be uh, calling this Absolutely. extraordinary moment in uh, Widener history. So, somewhat of a long huddle for this play as Wilmer will drop back oh. finds a lot of pressure he gets it up there There's and it's bat, intercepted and it's intercepted Widener will intercept it and that will do it and I believe that was Stacy Sonnerville Stacy Sonnerville and Probably we, the most influential defensive player today. He will wrap it up for Widener. And uh, with Aaron a, Wilmer with a little bit of Tom Brady in him as he kind of sat on the field in sadness. That's right. The Widener players are going crazy now. There is 101 left here in a 44 to 28 game. Hugs, <laughs> cheers going all around. And I believe they only need to only need to knee it twice just to end this game. That's right. And if they don't do that, I'm probably going to be frustrated with them. But I'm sure they will kneel it down as a man down on the sidelines. As emotions are reeling throughout this game. For Delval. Ooh. Ooh. Rashid Bailey. Well, probably, yeah, that looks to be Rashid Bailey. Folks, if you can't tell what uh, I'm talking about, is right across uh, at the 10-yard line right now, putting uh, somewhat of a damper right now on the celebration for Widener. But he is uh, right on the outside of the 10-yard line as they will get him up as he will walk it off as few cheers for Rashid as 101 once again left here Widener's ready to kneel it and ready for celebrations to begin man in motion they might just and run out the clock they are going to run out the clock Taron Morrison again he's going to get a couple yards an absolutely an exciting game for this Widener Pride uh, team. Very impressive end of their season. That's right, as the Widener bench, they're trying to pump up the fans. I'm certainly excited and, for them. And a flag and appears a flag. out of nowhere. What way to end a football game than another flag, Nick? The same way that it opened. That's right. We will see what penalties there are. I believe one of the... Uh, one of the coolers was now dumped on maybe the coach. Uh, we see just scattered ice all over the sidelines. <laughs> As the refs seem to be picking up, uh, picking up the pieces at this point. And it's going to go against Delaware Valley. That's right. As we're moving all the way up. Del Val, this will be their first loss of the season. Widener, uh, very, ha very happy to uh, give that to them. <laughs> As you can see, the 
Uh, there it is. One of the coaches just got a, a cooler dumped on him. We saw a lot of players scheming that scheme. 15 yard penalty, automatic first down for Widener. Oh, and, it, and I believe that's a Hicks Taylor trying to pump up the crowd. Montrell Hicks Taylor, as well as the players on the sideline trying to pump up this crowd. There's 27 seconds left. And there is the kneel, and ladies and gentlemen, that will do it. It appears the Widener Pride will be taking home the MAC Conference Championship this season after a, a stellar 10-0 season. Mm -hmm. Absolutely impressive from this team, and it's As time for the celebration. It is time for celebration here at Leslie Quick Stadium. I'd say probably the best player this game was uh, Anthony Davis, who kept him in with the, some of the biggest catches I've ever seen in football. And uh, i got to really attribute the win to the uh, both sides of the ball, who did outstanding holding Delaware Valley. That's right, Nick. I think offensively, Anthony was probably their best player. Defensively, Stacy Somerville, hands down, Absolutely. put on a clinic today for the Widener defense. Uh, Seth Klein, he played great. He got a couple touchdown passes. Tarrant Morrison was phenomenal. He had a couple total touchdowns yes. uh, on the on the day. And the uh, and the fake punt run that ended up going in Widener's favor. That's right. That was a huge play by Max Cutler, as we can see the Widener. Uh, players running around. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, for all of you, or for all of us here uh, <laughs> with the Widener Communications Studies Group, as well as everybody here at Widener, this has been such an honor calling this game. Thank you so much for listening. I'm Matt Nissenfeld, joined by my partner, Nick Safiri. And uh, I hope you guys have a great rest of the day and take care. Thank you so much. Goodbye. Let's go, Charlie! Get my sack. Do we got three right now? All right, excellent. Clear, clear. Yeah, we're out, we're out of here, that's it. All right, that's a wrap. I'm closing on that one.